My name is Tara Manisic. I'm TZ Mannix on Twitter and GitHub, and I am here today to continue on our video journey using Kendo UI with Vue. This is the fourth video in the series, so if you're just joining in now, we are using the chart component to display some votes that we got from the user interaction of using the buttons that people were able to click on other buttons to hear pronunciations and then click on radios and a button to vote for it. Let's go ahead and just jump right in and feel free to check out the other videos. They should be listed below down there along with a repo to show you what code that we have coded so far or the code for the whole project actually. All of that is there. Let's go ahead and go straight into where we left off before. So we'll go ahead and we'll actually close this down. This we had run npm start. And right now we are in the term list component. But I want to back go back a little bit to our main.js because we want to import the charts that we're going to use from Kendo UI. We can actually copy what we have for the button. And just change what we need to change. And even copy that view.use. And then, last but not least, add our chart to the component list down here. With the main.js done, we can move straight into our term list. Now, just keep in mind that usually we would want to keep a lot of these things pretty split up into their own components, but for today, we are just having the term list component to keep everything easy to wrap our minds around. Obviously, feel more than free to do amazing things like make an array of terms that you uh, v4 through to make these different pronunciation boxes or term boxes for each one of them, and you know, split up the components in any way your heart desires. I would love to see uh, somebody do that with these projects. For now, we're keeping it very simple. So the next thing we're going to do is add a new div. This div is going to be for term voting. Yay! Then we will add a div that will hold our term vote chart. I used to create data visualizations with the D3 software or library, which was really great. But once I found that to add a chart, you simply do open bracket kendo chart. And uh, we'll add some more to this chart but you basically have this kendo chart component. Add a few parameters, send the data through it, and you're done. <laughs> it's pretty nice. So the first thing we're going to do is say what kind of chart we're going to use, which you set with series defaults type, because we're doing the series type. And just to show my true love that I'm always thinking about it, we will use the donut chart. I love donuts. Send donuts. But there are a ton, if we look at the documentation real quick, um, there are a ton of different charts. So you can see here that we have area, bar, box plot, blah, 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 tons of different charts. So we set that. Then we are going to actually set the background to um, be transparent just because of how I'm actually styling the app, but otherwise it would be white. But you could set this to whatever you like. We're setting it to nothing, so it's transparent. Then this is where we pass the data, which for now we'll just set to series, and I'll show you series a little bit later. 
Next, I want to go ahead and add a tooltip so that we can get some information from the tooltip. Let's just jump that up. So that is all we add to our templates for our chart. I'm actually going to move Panting Toshi down. Now that we have our chart and our template, we want to um, add the functionality and connect these things that we have um, attached to the chart. So the first thing we're going to do is inside of data, return the information that we want for our tooltip. So we'll set that right here underneath pronunciation two votes. And this is an object that first we're going to say that it's true. <laughs> The visibility of the tooltip set to true so that we can see it. Next, we're going to template out what we want the tooltip to say. So I just want it to have the number, or that's the value, which is going to be the number of votes. Um, and then the number sign and the word votes. Tooltip set. Now is the fun part. So I want our chart to update every time that we get a new vote in. So we are actually going to add um, a uh, computed that we're going to set back because we want one value to change when another value changes. So we're actually going to have the series of the data sent to the graph change any time that pronunciation one or two is changed. So to do that, we're going to use compute, a computed property. <laughs> I had to remember. We're going to use a computed property. So we do that like we have sent in our data and methods down here. So we're going to be passing it series. And series is what we're using inside of our chart component. Is what we attach series in the chart, which is the data that it's using we passed series, and series will now become this function where we return the data we want the chart to use. So we are going to send data pretty much the same way we do with all other chart components. We have this data key and we send it an array of objects. First thing that we send is the category which is uh, how you describe each section of your donut chart. Mm, donuts. Next is the value, the amount that you want it to display. So for us, it's this step pronunciation vote, one votes. And then you can set the color that you want each part of that graph to show. And we'll do the same for the other pronunciation two votes. So with all this in here, let's save it and see what we get. So we have zero, zero for both of the results, so nothing will show. But once we hit vote once, we have one vote. <laughs> and then when we choose differently, we should have one vote each. And see, this is what we set for the format of our tooltip. And we can have the interactivity of shutting one off, which for a donut chart is kind of, especially when you only have two things, it's kind of silly. But when you have more than two things, it makes sense that you can compare just two things, uh, just or less than what you started with. So we have this lovely real-time graph. So as somebody votes, the graph updates. Let's go ahead and I'm going to actually remove that console that we have here, the console log, because we don't really want to commit code with console logs in it. And I'll go ahead and style some things real quickly. I'll do it a little bit sped up, but so you can see what's happening, but not be too uh, bored by what I'm putting together. 
So here, obviously, we're inside of our component, so I'll just do the styling for this component in particular first, so like our charts and our buttons. Ooh. Let's move over to the main view file, and then we're going to set some styling that will be over the whole project. All right, now with all of that styling done, we can take a look and see if that looks any better. Okay, so here is their application. Obviously, whether it looks better or not is pretty subjective. But we do have some styling off. One second. I forgot to add one thing. Styling of the kendo chart. Basically, I'm just setting the height here. Okay. And yay, we have a working and maybe nicer looking application. As you can see here, we have all of our voting results. We can do so many votes and click, click, click to update. And then we can see that when we scroll over, we have seven votes for GIF and eight votes for GIF. Feel free to tweet at me if you have a very strong preference of how that is pronounced. So that is our view plus Kendo UI project all done. In the next video, we'll talk more about what you can do more with these applications, with our components and everything else, plus more resources. So thank you for coding with me and I hope to see you soon.